One day, I got a really splitting headache, which I don't usually get, but it was a really splitting headache. And then after I had this headache for about a half hour, an hour, I realized what had to be done, what was the general formulation and how it proved. It wasn't really so difficult. So I never had that headache again. <laughs> Calderon had been working on what was then later known as the Calderon commutator theorem. And that developed into the proof of the Calderon's version of the Cauchy integral. In this commutator theorem, the basic fact was to prove that there is some operator, you want to prove that it's bounded on L2. And so I was thinking, maybe there is a general sort of L2 theorem that can be used to prove that that operator is bounded on L2. So what could that L2 theorem be? And so I remembered Cutler's lemma. So I thought to myself that if only we, one could find a non-commutative analog of Cutler's lemma, then one could do this Calderon commutator theorem. It just so happened that at that time, Cutler had a position in Rutgers. And I said, Misha, you know, you're a nice theorem. I think there is a non-commutative analog. And if that non-commutative analog holds, then I think we can prove the Calderon commutator theorem. And I was very excited, and I was going to tell Cutler, but Cutler called me up and he told me he had also found the proof. So we had both found essentially the same proof at the same time. By a particular way that, that you lecture and the way that you teach, there is tremendous work to find exactly the right point of view. When I teach, I'm always thinking about how would I have liked to have learned the subject. What I like about mathematics is the interplay with other people. And that generates extra energy because it really helps you think. I mean, you say something and then later the other person says something and then you say it just all works so well. Uh, and I, there's nothing like it. Thank you.